the seventh boy who stood up before the great warrior of the Philistines. in the center of the city. It remains to be seen whether a threatened full-scale war will materialize. جنود يعتلون منازل والقناصة لا يتورعون عن إطلاق النار على كل شيء يمر أمامهم بمن فيهم الصحفيين. As a journalist, the more you look into the issue of Israel and Palestine, the more you sense that something is not quite right. The images and the narration are out of sync. A little like a foreign film that has been awkwardly dubbed. بيوت مهدمة وطرق مدمرة وسيارات لم يعد يظهر منها إلا هياكلها أما الطعام والدواء فوجوده نادرا. As you look into it for yourself, you begin to suspect that there is something extremely odd going on. The more you look into it, the more you begin to feel it is not just odd; it is deeply disturbing. Our media portray Mideast violence as though it's an inherent part of the culture and region, implying that the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is an ancient problem with little hope of solution. دمار يخلفه الجيش الإسرائيلي في كل شبر من الضفة الغربية مدينة السلام المحاصرة لا زالت ترفع غصن الزيتون وكنيسة المهد تقصف بالآليات العسكرية. مئتا مواطن محاصرون داخل الكنيسة دون طعام أو دواء. These misperceptions come from the fact that we're only hearing a fraction of the story. You are about to witness images and testimony largely hidden from mainstream America. This place draws many people, whether they're Jewish, Muslim, or Christian. This is a holy place to significant numbers of us in the world. We all have an interest in sort of seeing what is this land and what's the situation here. And once you come, it, if you open your eyes at all, you can't miss the problems and the patterns that are here. I think it's hard to, to understand what occupation is. I think it's a foreign concept for many Americans, what it's like to live under military occupation. The definition of an occupation is when a foreign army occupies your land physically and controls your life. In addition, Palestinians under occupation, and this is why there's so much struggle against the occupation, they're not citizens, they don't have rights, they don't have civil rights. They're under a military rule. This is a particular kind of occupation that's both military and settler occupation. Settlements are areas of Palestinian land which are selected and whatever is there, whether it's roads or whether it's villages or homes, they are bulldozed and then a new town is built on the hilltop. 
One very good friend is uh, Rod Rodina Jabber, and she and her husband Opta have land in a rural valley near here called the Ba'a. And it's pretty clear these settlements want this land. It's some of the best agricultural land around here. So that valley has had repeated home demolitions. The Rodina herself has lived through two home demolitions. They're living now. The Rodina herself has lived through two home demolitions. They're living now in their third house. أجت الجرافة طبعاً مع الجيش اللي هجم علي على الخيمة أنا التخمت تهدوا ما تهدوا نتقاتل أنا وياهم أنا أصيحهم ما يصير صار يضربوني في راسي وكان اللي بوكلي وشعري ما سكني من شعري ونبت من شعري لما حطوا بكيت الجرافة على البيت قد تذكرت إنه يبني نايم في البيت هجمت على البيت بدأ أطوله أحمل أنا بركض على البيت والجيش بيسحب فيي من ظهري من ورا وضرب فيي في ظهري وشلبيت في جري وراس ومسك شعري من البوكلة وخلع شعري أنا جريت الجندي ودفعت على الأرض واحد منهم هيك مدقرين فيه كلهم أنا دبيت الجندي ودخلت على الولد حملته بين إيدي هيك تطلعت <تصفيق> Rodina and her children were once again homeless and had to endure living in a tent for many months. Her husband Atta was even imprisoned for protesting the destruction of their home. <laughs> رابطها في عرقتينا من فوق وبتلف على رقبتها وحاطة هيك تشرب في حالها لما شو بتساوي شو ما يجو هذا قال خلاص يعني احنا بدنا نضل قاعدين في الشمس تحت التينة بدناش نعيش بدنا نموت حالها فكيتها يعني سعيدها كان وضع مأساة وبشكل يعني تصور قديش ام قاعدة من ولادها بنتحرم يعني حالتهم النفسية لا تحت السفر في الليل حتى الليل والله ما بالنيمة بالليل